Waiter. Yes, sir? I'll have some uh, cold salmon, some potato salad, and a cold bottle of Pap Blue Ribbon. Yes, sir. Finest beer, sir. Anywhere. From Hollywood, Pabst Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere, proudly presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, production Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House, director H.C. Potter, star Cary Grant... Hollywood screen directors present a blueprint for laughter. Mr. Blanding's Bill's His Dream House. Starring Cary Grant and introducing the director of the film, H.C. Potter. of motion pictures can ordinarily be expected to satisfy anyone's urge for creative achievement. But not our guest screen director tonight, for he's also the director of such significant Broadway plays as Abel Foradano and Anne of a Thousand Days. On the screen, he's brought you such fine entertainment as Mr. Lucky, The Farmer's Daughter, and tonight's story, Mr. Blanding's Bills His Dream House. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. H.C. Potter. Thank you. People laugh at most comedies because something funny happens to the characters. But in the case of Mr. Blanding's, they laugh because the joke was on them. As millions of Mr. Blanding's saw themselves discovering the ferocious fact that homes are built, not born. Now, Mr. Blanding's builds his dream house for the first time on the air, starring Cary Grant in his original role of Jim, with Francis Robinson as Muriel. was once a carefree fellow who swung happily through the jungle trees, every man his own Tarzan. But then he wanted to get out of the trees and into caves. Then he yearned to get out of the caves into a house. He's still yearning. This is the story of Jim Blanding's New York apartment dweller, who yearned to get out of his cave. Tall, good-looking, college graduate, advertising business, VP in charge of the Wham Ham account has two fine daughters and one lovely, intelligent wife named Muriel. I'm Muriel. Every morning in our apartment, we fought for first, with the bathroom, the big bonanza. Started first thing in the morning, I'd open one eye, and there would be Jim nuzzling the furniture like a strange dog. Looking for something, dear? Ah, My socks. Why don't you look in your sock drawer? That's where I found my underwear. Try your underwear drawer. I am in my underwear drawer. Well, what did you find? Your underwear. (laughs) Then the great American bathroom derby. And there goes Jim Blanding's, an odds-on favorite. He's at the door. He opens it. Mm, Sorry. Father, I wish you'd knock. Uh, That was Betsy, age 10. Joan has a different screen. Uh, hmm. Conditions being what they were in our apartment, Jim would shave while I brushed my teeth. Oh, oh, Muriel. Sorry, did you cut yourself? I cut myself every morning. I kind of look forward to it. <laughs> Bill Cole uses an electric razor and... Bill Cole does not have my beard. Bill's beard is just as tough and I stubborn... I am and... not interested in discussing the green and texture of Bill Cole's hair follicles before I have my orange juice, please. And so forth. Until one morning, Jim saw an ad in the paper. Listen to this, Muriel. Hmm? Forced to sell. Farm dwelling. Original beams. Oak grove. Trout stream. Meadows. Superb view. Will sacrifice. So? Spend six, seven thousand dollars. We can have a home of our own. 
A dream house. Oh, Jim. Do you really think we could? Doesn't cost anything to look. Well, there she stands, folks. The old Hackett place. Finest old house in Connecticut. My, it's just charming. Dear, we're just looking. First year she was here... General Gates stopped right there to water his horses. Mm. Yes, sir. If you act fast, you can get that place for a steal. And I mean a steal. Ah. Uh, tell me, Smith, uh, what are you hoping to get for that uh, broken-down old relic? Hmm? Well, uh, we're asking $10,000. $10,000? He's asking. Uh, how, uh, how much will you take? $10,000? Well, that's more like it. We'll take it. Good morning, Gussie. Good morning, children. Good morning, Mr. Blanding. Good morning, morning, Father. Ah, Morning, Muriel. Good morning, dear. I'll go get your wham and eggs now, Mr. Blanding. Oh. Well, girls, uh, did your mother tell you about our new home? Yes. Well? Our teacher, Miss Stillwagon, says the current craze for modernizing old farmhouses is a form of totem worship. Oh, Miss Stellwagon does, huh? Mm. I was just thinking, Jim... $10,000 $10,000 was more than you wanted to pay for a place. It was a steal, Muriel. It was larceny. Shouldn't we see a lawyer? Bill Cole would have... For once in my life, I want to make a decision without Bill Cole. Well, he's your lawyer. Only because he was your old college beau. Now, I don't want Bill Cole puttering with this. That's final. No Bill Cole. <laughs> There's our house, Bill. What do you think? Uh, well, uh... what's that? Uh, uh, just a few shingles. Oh, it's a nice old house, Bill. It just needs someone to love. That's all. It's a good thing there are two of you, one to love it and one to hold it up. What'd your engineer say when he checked the foundation in that roof? Who needs engineers? This isn't a train. I just saw it move. (laughs) Now, now look here, Bill. It so happens that General Gates stopped at this very house to water his horses. I don't care if General Grant stopped in for a cold beer. You're getting rooked. Jim, uh, you don't think we've made a mistake. Oh, now listen to me, both of you. I've gone out and found what I'm not ashamed to call my dream house. It's like a, a beautiful painting. You buy it with your heart, not with your head, because it's beautiful, and, and, and you love it. And when I sign those papers Saturday, I can look the world in the face and say it's mine, my house, my home, my 50 acres. Our house, our home, our 50 acres. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, all right. You better let me have Joe Apollonio look the house over for you. Who? Uh, he's the man who advised the government not to raise the Normandy. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't listen to him and wasted $5 million. Bill, you have my word. If I were raising the Normandy, I wouldn't make a move without Joe Apollonio. Okay. Okay, Jim. Muriel, I kiss goodbye for an old college chum, and I'll be on my way. <laughs> I'm going to look around inside again. Uh, coming along, Muriel? Jim, the porch floor! Oh, dear. Well, well, don't just stand there. Get me out of this hole. Bill? Hey! I guess you'd better get in touch with Joe Apollonio. Any small changes in this house, Mr. Apollonio, would have to conform with the character of the countryside. Uh And still be functional. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Apollonio, uh, what's your professional opinion? Tear it down. (laughs) Tear it down? Tear it down. Get yourself an architect and build a new house. Get an architect? Build a new house. We certainly will not get an architect. Build a new house. The idea. Indeed. Yeah. So... Four experts later, we got ourselves an architect and had the old house torn down and began to discuss plans for a brand new house. 
And lots of closet space, Mr. Sims. If there's one thing this family needs, it's closet space. Uh, closet space. And bedrooms, Mr. Sims. Four big, roomy, airy bedrooms. Four bedrooms, Mr. Blanding? And, uh, and each bedroom to have at least one bathroom. Uh, and, uh, with uh, your limited budget, couldn't you do with one less bathroom? Well, of course. Absolutely not. It'll save $1,300. I and... refuse to endanger the health of my children in a house with less than four bathrooms. Muriel, Muriel, for $1,300, they can live in a house with three bathrooms and rough it. Now, uh, Mr. Sims, we'd like a terrace off the study And a three-car garage And, of course, a bar We must have a bar Of course What else? Uh, Just one thing Keep the cost down to $10,000 Yeah Well, Jim, you've done it again Done what? What's wrong, Bill? Did that idiot Sims let you tear down your house without consulting me? Well, what if he did? What of it? Wasn't anyone aware of the legality involved? What did I do? What did I do? Tell me. Didn't you realize that you were dealing with Ephraim as Hackett? Will you tell me what crime I've committed? Jim, what in the world did you do? I don't know. He won't tell me. You merely tore down a house on which Hackett held a $6,000 mortgage, which now becomes fully payable upon demand, and Mr. Hackett does so demand. Uh, where will we get it? Oh. Well, I suppose I could turn in my insurance policies. Uh, No, Jim. Not yet. No, rather than see you do that, I'll be glad to sign a note for that amount. Uh, Oh, thanks, Bill. Yeah, forget it. Well, kiss goodbye for an old college chum, Muriel, old chum. Huh? (laughs) Goodbye, Bill. Hey! So long, Jim. Hmm, Bye. What a wonderful friend. Now what's, it, well, what's with this kissing all of a sudden? Lately, every time he leaves his apartment, he shakes hands with me and kisses you. Would you prefer it the other way around? Well, I don't like it, that's all. Why doesn't he get married or something? Because he can't find another girl as sweet and pretty and wholesome as I am. Oh, darling, it isn't, Bill. It's the house you're upset about. Yeah, I suppose so. It isn't too late to change our minds about the house, Jim. Mm. Muriel, so far, our $10,000 house has cost us $24,698.45. Now, there's one thing you've got to admit. What? We've got the prettiest vacant lot in the state of Connecticut. Listening to Screen Directors Playhouse, starring Cary Grant in Mr. Blanding's Bills His Dream House, and introduced by the director of the film, Mr. H. C. Potter. You are in Detroit. It's quitting time. You, hot and tired from the day's work, push out through the factory gates. Right now you'd give your wilted shirt for a cool breeze. Wait a minute. What's that sign across the street in a cafe window? Oh, brother, Pabst Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere. Yes, during these hot July days, you're just one of millions of men all over America to whom that Pabst Blue Ribbon sign means welcome relief. For Pabst Blue Ribbon does something more than quench your thirst. It gives you taste, Blue Ribbon taste, the kind of taste you can't get anywhere else in the world except in that Pabst Blue Ribbon bottle. And fortunately, you can get that blue ribbon bottle all over the world. Yes, you hear it everywhere. In Detroit and Dayton and Dallas and Davenport. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Finest beer served. Anywhere. Your taste will tell you why. Now... Back to our Screen Director's Playhouse production of Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House, starring Cary Grant. They cleared the ground for the house. They began digging. They struck solid rock. They had to blast it. Blast it? It was now $27,000. And down at the office, Jim's deadline for the new slogan for Wham! was getting nearer. Mary. Yes, sir. Uh, how about this? When you want a snack of ham, why not take a whack at wham? You want a professional opinion? Never mind. The highly touted trout stream dried up. We had to dig a well. 
At four and one half dollars a foot, Jim thought he ought to have a word with Mr. Tassant, digger of wells. Mr. Tassander! Oh, Mr. Tassander! Yep? How's it coming? Oh, it's coming. No, no, no. No, no, I mean, Mr. Tassander! Yep. I meant... Uh, oh, how far down are you? Oh, about uh, 190 feet. Well, isn't that pretty deep? Yep. Have you hit anything at all? Mm, hit some nice limestone yesterday. Limestone? <laughs> yep. Oh, swell. Nothing on a hot day like a nice cold glass of limestone. <laughs> oh, nothing. Go right ahead. I'll just slink back to my office and pop the petty cash. <laughs> And then, wonderful to relate, we had our well at last. In fact, we had two wells, one in the yard and another in our basement, six feet down. Now, how do you explain it, Mr. DeSander? The men hit good water in my basement at six feet. And over there, just 25 yards away, you had to go down 227 feet to hit the same water. Yep. Well, how do you account for it? Well... Well, it seems to me, over here, the water's down around six feet. And over there, it's down, down around, around 227, 227 feet. Yep. There you are, Mr. Blanding, your favorite breakfast dish. Gussie. Not wham again. I love it. I hate it. Gussie, I spend eight long hours a day selling this stuff. I know all about its succulent goodness, its sugar-cured tenderness, its vitamin-drenched gazebo. Oh, you don't have to sell me, Mr. Blandon. I like it. Beef and lamb. Don't raid with lamb. <laughs> Ninth and day under the hide of me, wham. Dear, Bill's driving me out to the house again today. Every time I turn around, Bill's driving you out to the house. He's only being helpful. I thought he was a lawyer. Why isn't he out suing somebody? <laughs> oh, who's that? Hello? Oh, good morning, Bill. Oh, give him my love. Oh, wait a minute. What? Oh, that's outrageous. Just what does the owner of this apartment mean I've got to move in 30 days? Oh, fine. No. I know my rights. I have no intention of moving in 30 days. No. No. Well, well how can I move into a house without doors and windows? This is not legal, and I want you to fight it. I don't care if it takes every penny I've got. I am not moving. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Well? We're moving in 30 days. We moved in 30 days into a house with no doors, no windows, and no carpets. We walked around in our overcoats. And at no time did General Eisenhower drive up to share a cup of hot toddy with us. Instead, the green-eyed monster showed up. That old devil jealousy. Because Jim, while unpacking, came across Bill Cole's fraternity pin and my college diary. He didn't say anything until just before we went to bed. I merely asked a question. What is Bill Cole's fraternity pin doing in your jewel box? Especially after you told me you gave it back to him 15 years ago. <laughs> Jim Blandings, I think you're jealous. Yeah, and his name all over your diary. Oh, now you've been reading my diary. Well, it, it, it just happened to fall open. I'll just bet. If you were so crazy about the guy, why did you marry me? I'm beginning to wonder... Maybe it was those big cow eyes of yours. <laughs> or that ridiculous hole in your chin. <laughs> or maybe I just happened to fall in love with you. Don't ask me why. Oh, Muriel, I, I, I'm sorry. Sometimes I act like a schoolboy. Forgive me. Oh, Jim. <sighs> oh, why do I love you so much? <laughs> 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 Darling, it's awfully late. Maybe you better go down and lock the doors. Well, what for? The windows are all out anyway. <laughs> we better get to bed. Yeah. Do you think the mattress will hold on these four chairs? Mm, certainly. Ah. 
Good night, dear. Good night. Good evening, Danton and Bascom Advertising. Oh, yes, Mrs. Blandings, he's right here. It's your wife, boss. Uh, yes, Muriel? Uh, yes, it's raining here, too. Well, no, I'm sorry, dear. I can't make it for dinner. I'm going to be here all night with this slogan. What? Bill is coming to dinner. Bill. Oh, all right, Muriel. I, I've got to get back to work. Bye, Muriel. Bill. Boss, how's this for a slogan? East is east and west is west. Ham is ham, but wham is best. Sorry. Mm. Wait a minute, how's this? If you'd buy better ham, you'd better buy wham. That's boil petroleum. You better buy oil, you better buy boil. Yeah, I confound those monopolies. Wait, wait a minute, I've got it. Win with wham, the ham that came from behind. Oh, no. <laughs> Brother. Well, by five o'clock in the morning, Jim gave up in disgust and started out for the house. Jim, dear. Uh, morning, Muriel. Oh, you must be exhausted. How'd it go? Oh, fine, fine. fine. Oh, uh, Muriel, I can't seem to find Jim's other slippery. Oh, Hello, Jim. Morning, Bill. What brings you... What are you doing in my pajamas and dressing gown? Well, how would I look without them? Uh, Bill dropped in and had to stay all night when the bridge was washed out. Yeah? Slept like a rock. <laughs> rock. <laughs> Slept like... Uh, uh. Good morning, folks. Sure hope it wasn't as bad here last night as it was in Lansdale. Gussie wasn't here last night? Lansdale. Saw the girls at the Williamses. They'll be along for breakfast any minute. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, the children weren't here last night either. Visiting the Williamses. Williamses. Um, if you'll excuse me, I'll slip into something more comfortable. <laughs> Williamses. Now, Jim, you're upset. You've a lot of things on your mind, and there's I... only one thing on my mind: this house and how to get rid of it. That's not what you're thinking. Well. Maybe I'm thinking I was once a happy man. I didn't have a closet, and I didn't have three bathrooms, but I did have my sanity, a few dollars in the bank, two children who loved me, and a wife I could trust. That's a fine thing to say. I also had a job, something I don't have at the moment. Jim. I'm resigning, and I blame this house for everything. You love this house. I hate it. Anybody who builds a house today is crazy. The minute you start, you're on the all-American sucker list. Everywhere you turn, there's a hand in your pocket. Take out the hand, they find more pockets. <laughs> Tell you it's a conspiracy against every man and woman who want a home of their own. Against every boy and girl who were ever in love. Against... Excuse me, Mr. Blanding. Now, what do you want, Mr. DeSander? We've got our well. Uh, there's a matter of $12.86. Oh, $12.86. Uh, why be a piker, Mr. DeSander? Take everything I've got. Here, take my watch, my keys, my pocket money, my driver's license, my wallet. Take it all. Uh, Mr. Blanding's. You don't understand. This $12.86, you don't owe me. I owe you. Huh? I found an overcharged jar in the well. Almost three feet. Three feet? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Tassan. Hey. Well, guess I better be getting along. Sure got a mighty pretty place here. Now, you folks take good care of it. Goodbye. <laughs> Wonderful man, Tissander. Come and get it, folks. Orange juice, scrambled eggs, and you know what? Ham. Not ham, wham. If you ain't eating wham, you ain't eating ham. <laughs> Wait. What is she saying? If you ain't eating wham, you... You ain't eating ham. Darling, that's it. The slogan. Give Gussie a ten dollar raise. Oh, Jim. Oh, Muriel. Oh, and darling, you didn't mean what you said. You do love our house, don't you? Oh, Muriel, I don't know. If I had it to do all over again, 
If I had to put up with tearing it down and architects and, and well diggers and builders and contractors and bathrooms, if I had to mortgage my future, my job, my peace of mind, just to wind up with a house, a simple $45,000 house, <laughs> if I had it to do all over again... Yes. I guess I'd do it. <laughs> In a moment, our star, Cary Grant, and screen director H.C. Potter will return to the microphone. In spite of the glamour and publicity surrounding Hollywood, you'll find that most of the movie stars lead a quiet home life, just like you and me. When they entertain, more often than not, they'll serve a simple but delicious buffet supper. A baked wham, perhaps, with potato salad, toasted English muffins, and cold bottles of Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. Yes, everything in perfect taste. Blue Ribbon Taste. And it's that Blue Ribbon Taste that makes this internationally famous beer so popular here in Hollywood. For instance, I happen to know that Pabst Blue Ribbon is served in the home of Mr. Blandings, who is standing right here beside me. Mr. Blandings, of course, is none other than Cary Grant. <laughs> Cary, it's true, isn't it? You serve Pabst Blue Ribbon in your home? James, when beer is called for, it's Pabst Blue Ribbon. Well, I think it's time that director Hank Potter and I revealed the truth about the real Mr. Blandings, huh? Oh, you mean the fellow who actually built the house? Ah, uh, it's a sad story, isn't it, Hank? Poor Mr. Blandings. The inevitable finally caught up with him. Mm -hmm. His house was finished. He bought his furniture. He planted his lawn. The dream house was complete. And then they came... The little men in white coats. Yeah, they, they took him away, Jimmy. Daffy? Leaky faucets. <laughs> well, good night, Hank. Good night, Hank. Good night, Jim. Good night, everyone. Good night. Right. And good night to you, Cary Grant and H.C. Potter. Just to remind you that tomorrow is the beginning of the long and glorious Fourth of July weekend. Three whole days of relaxation. You'll be planning picnics and backyard barbecues. Be sure you have plenty of Pabst Blue Ribbon beer cooling in your refrigerator. It's the delightful way to celebrate the 4th with friends and neighbors and Pabst Blue Ribbon. Finest beer served anywhere. Your taste will tell you why. Next week on Screen Director's Playhouse, Pabst Blue Ribbon presents The Big Clock, starring Ray Milland and Maureen O'Sullivan. Mr. Blanding's Bills' his Dream House was presented through the courtesy of RKO Pictures, producers of The Big Steel, starring Robert Mitchum, Jane Greer, and William Bendix. Cary Grant is starring with Anne Sheridan in the soon-to-be-released 20th Century Fox production, I Was a Male War Bride. H.C. Potter is preparing the MGM production, Europa and the Bull, starring Greer Garson. Included in tonight's cast were Francis Robinson as Muriel, with Ann Whitfield, Don Bender, Fred Howard, Willard Waterman, Frank Gersel, Wilms Herbert, Herb Butterfield, Betty Moran, Ruby Dandridge, and Dan Ritz. Mr. Blanding's Bills' his Dream House, based on Eric Hodgins' novel, was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley, associate producer Bill Karn. Listen again next week when Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer presents... Screen Director's Playhouse... Production, The Big Clock. Director, John Farrell. Stars, Ray Milland. Maureen O'Sullivan. Screen Director's Playhouse is brought to you by the Paft Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Newark, New Jersey, and Peoria, Illinois. And sent your way with the best wishes of the Paft Blue Ribbon Dealers from coast to coast. James Wallington speaking. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.